coming to get you, Barbara. Here's some money. Go see a Star Wars. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. Welcome back to Long Walk Talks. My name is David Hensley. I am the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and I am joined today, as always, by my two co-hosts, Stan Wilson Lee. Hello. And Chris Wilson Barnes. No, 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 Nolan. I <laughs> love it. Well, Chris, thank you for that opening. Uh, today we are going to be continuing Ooh. our Christopher Nolan. It is not it's cold. cold. You keep your lizard ass over there and shiver the whole time. I want the audience to hear your teeth chattering. It is 77 degrees in our building right now, so I turned the AC on. Below. Oh, my God. Zero. Today we are going to be continuing our Christopher Nolan filmography discussion with the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, yes, we did go out of order a little bit because this came out. Or, I'm sorry, Batman Begins came out before the Prestige but I want to talk about oh, it these films been, it as a been, trilogy. Yeah, it would have been dumb to start with Batman Begins, jump to the prestige, and then like, well, now picking up in the Dark Knight. Yeah. So. <laughs> Although that would have been <laughs> it would have been really funny to me, just pretend the prestige was part of it. Yeah. Just, yeah. <clears throat> the distant history. So we asked a lot of, uh, you know, deep philosophical questions in both Memento and... Uh, the prestige and there's going to be a lot of that to come with films like interstellar and inception and tenet these three films not quite so deep and philosophical so i've got a couple of uh, very easy kind of softball questions for us to discuss and then i've got the mystery question and so we're going to start out very simple uh stan hmm. of the three films which one do you personally think is the best and why? The Suicide Squad. No, just kidding. Um, uh, I like. I, I mean, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, uh, Batman Begins, uh, the first one in the trilogy, um, because of its freshness and its redefinition of the superhero film and what a superhero film can represent on the big screen or in <clears throat> cinema as a whole, because. Am I wrong? Or it predated pretty much everything else, right? Uh, the first, the first in this trilogy, uh, Batman Begins. It, yes, it Batman Begins. Iron it Man does predate like the other movies in this the trilogy. True. No, no. The, <laughs> yes, it predates Iron, Iron Man, Man by and, about three and, by three years. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, uh, so, in the sense that it kind of established that it can be done and it can be done well, and um, you said something that is not very philosophical and stuff like that. That is not too over your head and, and everything, but but in the sense of what is presented thematically, um, especially as it goes on, even into the Bane stuff and the third one, in Rise Dark Knight Rises, but uh, I think even in Batman Begins, you know the 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 everlasting questions of man versus evil and man versus themselves and you know and their. Uh, uh, Thank you for that, Chris. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not mean for that to get on mic. No, no that's okay. Uh, the 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 search for um, good and truth, um, I think, is very well explored in, in the series as a whole. But I think it with Batman Begins, it established that superhero movies can be really great, thought provoking cinema as well. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to say that there's not a lot of uh, deep questions and deep philosophy at play with these three films. I'm just saying that in comparison to the other ones like The Prestige and Memento that we've just covered so far and with the ones that we have to go, yeah. this is kind of... Uh, it was a break for him. <laughs> sort of, yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that a little more as we go on. But Chris, uh, of the three films, which one is your favorite and why? Um, uh, well, I'll, uh, I will say, uh, mine is Dark Knight Rises, uh, because the, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, if you're watching something like a trilogy, the best part for me is seeing the conclusion. I want to see how it ends. Uh, and I think they did a good job. Uh, I liked it a lot, but I mean, one, well, I'm, 
I sort of burned out on The Dark Knight because when it came out, I ended up seeing it like four different times that year, and I've seen it, you know, over the years intervening. Uh, so while it's a great movie, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. And um, Batman Begins, as good as it is, will always, will always, as it goes along, just be me going, get in the costume. Get in the costume. Yeah. Be Bat- begin Batmaning already. Yeah. That's fair. Um, wow, I did not expect this uh, for each one of us to have a different answer. Mine is The Dark Knight. There we go. And when Stan and I were talking about this last week, I was I, I told him my favorite was Begins and that we were on the same page with that one. And when I rewatched the trilogy, when I watched Begins, I was like, God, this is so fucking good. This is as good as I remember it being uh, in 2005. And then I watched The Dark Knight over the weekend and I was like, fuck, it's true. This one is better. It um, is great. It's a great movie. It really is. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot more at play plot wise in Dark Knight. And the, the last 30 minutes of that film is always going to be like and i mean there has to be because i mean since it's in that trilogy it's basically the second act of the whole thing so yeah yeah Um, and heath ledger and heath ledger i mean uh, yeah we'll get well again i don't (laughs) want to bury the lead on a lot of these topics it's very easy to do with a discussion like this but chris you actually reminded me there was one there was a a topic that i wanted to include that i forgot to put on the list Mm -hmm. um how many times did you guys see each of these movies in the theater? Stan, how many times did you see Begins, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises? I'm trying to think. Um, Begins, I didn't see in the theater. Dark Knight, I probably saw twice. And then um, <clears throat> I didn't see uh, Rises Rises in the theater. Chris, I know you said you saw Rises four times. No, 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 not Rises. Dark Knight. Oh, okay. Um, Begins, one. Uh, Dark Knight, I want to say at least four. Because I went... I know I went with at least three other people. Um, and then uh, Rises was two. Okay. Because you and I saw it, and then we saw it again with Stan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so you I, did I see did Rises. I did see Rises. Yeah. You did. did yeah. Because yeah. you were with us. It's okay. I forgot about that, too. Uh, I saw each of these films Maybe four I times. Uh, I was so smitten with Batman Begins that I, I think I went with a girlfriend to see it. I took my mom to see it. I went and saw it at least once by myself, and then I went and saw it with my friend Nick. Uh, the summer of 2008, when The Dark Knight came out, if you weren't going to see The Dark Knight multiple times, you were an outlier. <laughs> As an aside, um, just kind of a tangent, the entire movie summer of 2008 is one of the best I've ever it seen. It really I is. I agree. I agree. Wally, Iron Man. Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. Yeah, that was a Dark great Knight. summer. Uh, yeah, just all over. It was, it was all over a great summer. And then yeah, Dark Knight Rises four times also. So, yeah, I am a nerd, and I. Sp- it is one of the, I, I it is one of the great, at, at least my favorite, one of my favorite, uh, series or trilogies of movies that i and especially it being now Mm -hmm. where i'm kind of a fan of earlier stuff you know 70s 80s stuff but but in the sense that it's so modern and it's so redefining it is definitely one of my if not my favorite uh or second favorite behind the lord of the rings of course but uh uh favorite trilogies movie series of all of a, a long time long time one of the things that's very unique about it is the fact that um it's i mean it's essentially since it's its own separate continuity from everything else nolan tells a complete story and bruce wayne gets closure at the end he does he yeah. nolan successfully did something that no other writer no other batman storyteller i think has ever done as far as I'm aware, now, like, I know Frank Miller tried to put a button on the story with uh, The Dark Knight Returns, but then he immediately went and undid that. Not immediately, like 16 years later, with The Dark Knight Strikes Again. Mm-hmm. But no one, and again, I'm not a comic book expert, so I could be wrong, but I don't think anyone's ever explored the idea of Bruce actually retiring and getting to live happily ever after. <clears throat> no, there were a lot of, 
uh, in the world's finest series, there was always those imaginary stories where he ends up having a kid and passes the mantle or stuff like that. Or there's the uh, Batman Beyond where he does. Right. Yep. But aside from that, I mean, that uh, no, no, they don't really explore it too much. Because you know, you got the Batman with the gray hair, which yeah. could be the Earth Two Batman or whatever, you know. But the idea that he's been around for a long time and he hasn't found a way to get out of it. Well, it's just kind of the accepted can- canon that he just kind of would never. <laughs> right. And I agree with you. It, the The completion of his arc is great. Now, my problem with that is these films are so good that I wish it hadn't been three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of wish there had been a film between each of them. Sure. Um, you know, between Begins and Dark Knight and then a film between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. It just... Maybe, and again, it's because I watched all three films in less than a week, but they just go by so fast, (laughs) even at the length that they're at. I really, I would love to see more of Nolan's Bat universe. And I really would have liked to see more of Batman Begins Gotham when it was seedier and uh, grittier than by the time time we get to the Dark Knight when it actually just looks like a big metropolitan city again. Eh, I mean... I, I I always I always enjoy the, the, about superhero movies the part where the superheroing happens more often. Uh, I I know a lot of people love the ground level stuff, and I know I know you guys are fans of Gotham. And it's just I I enjoy the the more the bigger part of it. Yeah, not to fair. say the street level stuff can't be fun because Spider Man is street level. Yeah, but I'm not as into it. That's fair. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to lob another uh, softball question. Hey, you guys, one of the most talked about and probably the easiest answer uh, of all of these discussion topics. of the Out of the three films, which villain is the best? And we're going to keep it specifically to like the villain of the story because each one has a couple of uh, smaller ones there as well. So, so Scarecrow, Joker, Bane? Well, I was going to go Roz. Oh, Ra- oh that, I'm sorry. Yeah, Roz right. al Ghul, Roz, Joker, Joker, Bane. Bane. Stan, I I mean, he he defined it. He re, uh, redefined and then de- defined it. Uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. I mean, I was wondering if you were actually going to say who you were talking about, if you were just or if you were just going to keep saying redefined. <laughs> but no, I mean he 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 turned it in, and he made it an operatic performance. He made it a you know I mean it's just it's just a classic piece of. It's it, it's a it's a film school. I mean, it's an acting school performance. You know, it's like you want to see a great performance. Watch that. You know, watch that Joker performance. Um, and in it, yeah, it, it's it's hands down for me. Um, even though I like begins as a film as the best, but yeah, Joker Heath Ledger's Joker is the best villain of the group. Chris, what do you think? Uh, I'll give Joker the edge because it, it is a great performance. I just, I would say, like, number two right below, I think Tom Hardy does so good as Bane. Um, that it, I mean, it's overshadowed a bit by following Joker. Um, yeah, that it's such a hard act to follow. But, I mean, they do such a, they do so well with the character. And they showcase, I mean, they don't really, I mean, they can't really showcase the, you know, he uses Venom to jack himself up and, and wreck, wreck havoc that way. But they also they do a good job of showcasing just how smart he is in the, mm-hmm. from the comics as well. And how he outthought Batman at every turn in Nightfall. I think I'm going to be the outlier here and go with Bane's apple box. <clears throat> uh, because Tom Hardy is so much shorter <laughs> than everybody else in the movie. Yeah. Uh, no, it's hard. Uh, well, how tall is Tom Hardy? He's, he's like average height, isn't he? Uh, yeah. He's like, yeah, I just know that, that a lot of work went into making him look bigger. Right, especially Because right. um, I know Bale's over six foot, so... Yeah, and I cannot remember the name of the actor that plays Daggett in Rises, but that scene where Bane just towers over yeah. him. I know that he's on an Apple box. <laughs> uh, no, I want to be contrarian, but it, I gotta say Joker. Yeah. Uh, people have been talking about Heath Ledger's Joker... I, I was going to say for the last 13 years since it came out in 08, but people have been talking about it since he was announced in 2007. Yes. Well, I mean, initially it was 
why why the hell did they pick him? And then it finally gave way into, wow, he's great. I, I still distinctly remember uh, fall or winter of 2007 when they released the, the very first Dark Knight trailer. Mm-hmm. And you got to see Heath Ledger as the Joker and hear the voice and hear the laugh. And everyone was like, oh, OK, I see it. Yeah, now. yeah. They were very unsure. Um, and and not to not to downplay, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Liam Neeson as as Roz Ra- Roz or Rachel Ghoul. Um, yeah, but, we're going to use the film's pronunciation since we're discussing those and right. not get into a, a debate on how to pronounce Arabic uh, it names. It depends on what show, honestly. What it version does. of Batman? Gotham goes with Raish. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think I think the games go with Raish there, but I but on the animated series from the '90s, it was Roz. Yeah, um, but. It's it's hard to say that, that that villain outshines a lot of people because even in the comics or a lot of time he's 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 the man in the shadows most of the time. He's yeah. the guy pulling strings and then he shows up later to gloat and be ha ha, I got you good. Um Yeah, and he, and begins Roz is only a presence for half of the movie yeah. and you only know him as Roz for a quarter of the movie. Yeah. Like he shows up at the beginning of act three to reveal that he's Roz and up until that point, you thought he was somebody, you know, a completely different character. You thought the mob or Scarecrow was going to be the villain of the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was a great reveal, but it's hard to give uh, Liam Neeson the edge here just because he got to spend so little time as right, that kind right. of character. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I want to go into another softball one or... Uh, yeah, I do. And then we're going to hit, get the the hard-hitting one. Okay. Um, out of the three films... What was the best action sequence? Because this trilogy has some truly incredible sequences in it. Stan, what do you think is the best one? I have a tie, and they're both from uh, Dark Knight. Um, uh, the first, well, I guess it would be second confrontation, but but uh, uh, when the when the uh, Tinker truck is flipped. Yes, the eighteen wheeler. The eighteen wheelers flipped, and and uh, uh, so the sequence leading up to that, and then that happening, and but the what really gets me about that scene is when it. Sorry, Chris, but when it grounds itself again and Joker falls out of the truck. That's not. I mean, that's not something uh, I'm upset about. You know, and and um, and it and he just walks towards the the bat. Uh, I don't even know what it's. The uh, bat pod. The bat pod. He walks. Always, the- I thought the weirdest name for that vehicle, <laughs> the bat cycle. It's just. And so now it's cla- the cat cycle. The, so. well, yeah. <laughs> the but, bat pod is his music listening device. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When they announced that that's what that was called, I was like, bat cycle, bat cycle, whatever bat you. Cycle. He's had, he's canonically had a bat cycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the what, bat pod. What as, the hell is that? As joke. I mean, and he's limping, it's and it's like garbage. you know he's in pain, but he's not bothered by it, and he's just like, come on, come on, hit me, hit me. Hit he me. demonstrates why good trigger discipline is important yes. when he stumbles and just shoots a oh, shoots a person <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> yes, and um, and he's using the he's basically using the shotgun as a cane to get him through, and it's a really great physical performance on his part but then the look that christian bale's batman has on on the bat pot as he's as he like decide and then he decides to go after him and and uh heath ledger's joker is like come on hit me hit me i want you to do it i want you to do it because you know the thing is that he's not afraid of death because he wants to die you know and that that's his whole purpose that's his purpose is to be ended and uh nobody can do it yet and he's like come on you can do it you can do it and then the last, literally the last moment and the timing of, of this moment, it's like, he's going to hit him. And then he just like jumps himself off the bike and lets the bike go around. And, and just the disappointment Joker has. The fact is, that he turns around and looks and mouths, fuck. <laughs> Like the only use of the F word in the entire trilogy. And it's not even said out loud. He just mouths, fuck. It is so fun. Uh, and then again later in the film, the uh, SWAT team uh-huh. uh, 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 raid on the building where they yes. think they have the doctors as hostages from Joker's team, and, and they have to figure out the whole switcheroo. Again, we're not spoiling anything. If you haven't seen it since 2008, then you know you're probably. Not yeah, I'm really it, bad but, about this. I always mean to say things like 
you know, at the top of every episode. The, at this point, these these movies, especially Dark Knight, is so steeped in pop yep. culture yep. consciousness yep. that you, even if you haven't seen the movie, you've absorbed a good yep. bit of yeah, it. Yeah, I wanted to say that at the top. That's why we're not giving, uh, you, you know, uh, plot beat, descriptions beat beat, yeah. yeah, or anything like that. We're, we're just assuming that... You've seen these films. If you're listening, they're to this, classics. If you're they're listening classics. to this podcast, you've seen these movies. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um. And the whole raid on on this building to get to save these hostages, and you know, Batman's the the new contraption, whatever that the Batwing, uh, that he flips open and to fly into the into the building, um, which leads to the uh, no, I guess that's before it went, uh, Lucius is next where he. Where he's feeding him intel? Where he's feeding him an intel, but uh, when he has the plane uh, take him out, the oh, tail yeah, hook. Oh, yeah, that's, that's moment. the tail hook is much earlier in the film. Uh, yes, yes. But uh, uh, so, yeah, the the SWAT raid on the um, hotel, the, the climax, the yeah. uh, right before. Because um, the best fight scene, I believe, is between Joker and Batman at the end. Uh when right before they do the whole blowing up of the boats but mm -hmm. uh uh leading up to that the that the SWAT team raid that's a brilliant brilliant sweet sequence of events Chris what do you think uh well I really I think it should stand really illustrated I think the Dark Knight had the most like action set pieces out of yeah. all the movies and I and I think that's how what he, what makes it take like the best I think there's so many to choose from that are good. I think the ones I like that, well, one, the highway chase is probably the best overall, just pure action. Um, but I really like the opening with the bank robbery. Yeah. The, yes. Yeah. I, I it sets up. It now. sets up in a in a very interesting way. You know, what Batman's going to be dealing with in terms of the Joker mm -hmm. and how he operates. And then the other one, again, Joker wise, is the hospital. Yeah. That, that's four great that, moments because that's yeah. just yeah well this the the triggering of the bomb is just a, a very good it's action. classic yeah. it's become a, a classic moment him stopping the glitch yeah <laughs> which people insist to this day uh that was actually an outtake that they they put in the movie and it really didn't go off no that's that was absolutely part of the script if those if those bombs had think, not gone off when he pressed the button they would have immediately called cut and evacuated everyone because those were live explosions right exactly i think i think the only thing they did was just not tell him exactly when they were going off yeah which made him improvise a little bit yeah which is great because you just see that impulsiveness as he's just pushing the button trying to and then turning and hauling ass yeah. oh god <laughs> Oh, it's the only time you see the joker get startled um <laughs> Yeah, I got to go, much like Stan said, with the SWAT team takedown at the end of Dark Knight. The The last half hour of that movie is a perfect 10. Everything from the Joker's announcement uh, about the bridge, bridges and the tunnels to loading the people and the prisoners on the boat. Everything from then on is just, in my opinion, sheer genius. But for me, if I ever get the budget and the crew and the script together to do a sequence half as good as everything that takes place in that tower. Once Batman glides in uh, from realizing that he, the Joker has tricked the police. He's disguised the, uh, the hostages as clowns and he's mm -hmm. disguised his people as the hostages to having to take down two full floors of SWAT team members. And that sequence has something that no other Batman film has, which is truly the what the hell is Batman doing? Mm -hmm. Because at first you have no idea why he's using that little sticky bomb gun. And then you have no idea why he's clipping cords to all these SWAT team members until he blows out the floor above him and then knocks them all over the side tied together. That that sequence just beginning to end is sheer brilliance in my mind. Um. So now that we've got the uh, the softball questions out of the way, it's time for what I dubbed the mystery question. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy in the last year and a lot of talk of canceling things and people. Mm -hmm. And it was about this time last year that there was a very reactionary response to 
a lot of different programs like the talk of canceling Brooklyn Nine Nine because it was about police officers. And well, I think the problem was it was well people threw around the term copaganda because it yeah. was a positive look at police officers. Yes, people were talking about canceling the Punisher. Because a bunch of right wing or the, the alt right has adopted the skull uh, emblem for their own usage, negating or I'm sorry, discounting the fact that in the comic books, the Punisher routinely goes after white supremacists and <laughs> dirty cops. And on, and, and on top of that, they have made it clear in the comics, like they made it clear via an issue where the co- where he was met, he saw some cops and was like, hey, we're on your side. And he's like, you shouldn't be. Right. I'm doing something horrible, and if I find out you're imitating me, I'm coming after you. He, right. That's what he literally says. So a lot of people started saying, uh, why Why is Batman still so popular? Uh, Bruce Wayne is a generic, white, rich protagonist. And there's a lot to unpack there, but we're not going to discuss that. Here's what uh, I want to ask the two of you. Mm-hmm. Why aren't billionaires doing more? Stan. Why aren't billionaires doing more? Yeah. This sounds like a, like a question I asked you. Um, uh, and that's the thing with Bruce Wayne is that he knows his billions are not the result of just him. That if it's not for the people he's supposed to protect, he doesn't have those billions. I mean, yes, he's inherited it from his father, but his father also knew. Um, so the you know, billionaires should be doing more. And it's like it's like the Bezos is like, why are you going to space when you can just you can heal the world here by you know maybe paying your workers more, or you know it's like uh, maybe get them health care and they'll come back to work and you know help you make more money and you can help more people. You know you don't have to go to space. Uh, Branson, on the other hand, is maybe doing what the billionaires are supposed to do. He's like, yes, his, but he's already helped his people here. He's opening up space in the and the idea that we can continue as a people, not as his group of people, but as a people as a whole to further on into space. So, um, and Branson's responsible for the Virgin shit. So it's like um, that's been that's been for the people for a long time do you want to elaborate for our listeners what the virgin shit is the (laughs) the virgin uh empire you know virgin airlines virgin records you know it's like um i mean he started out as a music executive Mm -hmm. um and was was producing acts that nobody wanted to produce you know because they weren't commercially viable so he was you know he was there at the beginning to launch acts that were not being launched um, so his idea is what I think Bezos should be doing. Um, why are billionaires not doing more? Because uh, they think their stockholders are smart. And it's like, you know, you don't want to upset your stockholders because that'll be bad. I mean, it's just like, you know, why the... Roger Smith decided to go against the union in General Motors when for years his family had been supported by the union and it had been built up by the union and they were being fairly decent, you know, in General Motors. And and then Roger Smith comes in and totally, totally infiltrates the union and turns the union into nothing but management proxies, you know. So it's like... Um, I, I, you know, I... I, I it's like they're billionaires for a reason and they have the capability of and the uh, potential to do great. But I mean, unless you're uh, uh, Bill Gates and his ex-wife, you know, who are doing more, who are doing great, you know, it's like, why can't they be more like them? Chris, what do you think? Why aren't billionaires doing more? I don't understand the question. <laughs> I mean, honestly, They've taken all their hard-earned money and they've <laughs> they've made uh, dick-shaped rockets to penetrate the cosmos with. What more do you want? 
That should have. You know what? I hadn't answer. thought about that. You are absolutely right. They have earned every dollar they spend on those penis rockets. <laughs> yeah. You know who's done the most with Jeff Bezos' money? His ex-wife. Yeah. She's been a mega th- philanthropist with his money, and was apparently the only good thing about him because yeah. once he lost her, uh, he's just been going full Lex Luthor. And he looks like him, too. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah we got... Because that's, that's the problem with reality. We don't get Bruce Wayne, who actually gives a shit and is more and wants to, A, help Gotham by dressing up as a Batman and beating up, you know, super, vil- super villains. He also takes his money and invests it well to help people and the city that he loves. Mm-hmm. We get Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk yeah. and... The third one, I don't remember his name. Is it Richard Branson? I don't care. But, <laughs> but, uh, and and Bruce's consideration of his people, you know, like the Lucius Foxes and and you know the people like that he works with, he has a legitimate caring for the people that are there, that are allowing him to do what he's able to do. You know, it's like yeah. the great um, thing about fiction is you get to give billionaires a soul. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. I mean, Rises outright mentions two very good points. One, which is that Bruce sunk at half of his fortune, which he has established as a multi-billionaire, so at least a billion dollars, into the clean energy project that he then shelved because it was too dangerous. But Alfred also makes a good point in Rises, which is he doesn't have to be Batman to help the city. He no. could be investing those billions of dollars into other ways of stopping crime also true but that doesn't soothe the ptsd that riddles his life and, it's and, true and it's because it, at that point um there's just at the point there's just too much corruption so that's and this is why alfred says that yes they needed you at the beginning hence batman begins it's like the police weren't doing it on their own because they were in the pocket that's why they called it begins <laughs> Holy shit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> oh, I broke him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that they the police were in the pockets of the mob, so it's like uh and because he w- was who he was and he had the and the thing is, he also had the advantage of he went east. Right. He went and took gave himself a self-exile after his parents were murdered. Um, and Alfred waited for him, and and we find out that Alfred didn't want him to come back. Yeah, it's like because he had nothing in Gotham. But the thing is, he went out and got an Eastern religion. Yeah, you know, and uh, so well, let's call it an Eastern philosophy. An Eastern, I wouldn't so much say I, that I, Bruce I, I, took up an Eastern I, religion. Eastern, Eastern philosophy. So the amazing like, thing when he comes back and commits to being Batman is in the sh- few short years he's doing it, he's absolutely revolutionizing the city. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The six months that he's doing it. Yeah. Um, all right. So it's been a popular joke for a long time now. There are X number of billionaires in the world and not one has become Batman or sometimes Iron Man. Uh, come on, do better. Like that's usually the format of the joke. Right. So I decided to Google it. Uh, how many billionaires are there in the world? Two thousand seven hundred and fifty five billionaires for a total net worth of 13.1 trillion dollars uh the top five forbes's uh, top five billionaires list jeff bezos elon musk bernard Ar- arnault i'm probably saying that right or i'm sorry i'm probably saying that wrong bill gates mark zuckerberg mm-hmm. zuck found, uh, fell to the number five at some point you can keep falling yeah uh so why aren't billionaires doing more because we might as well be on a why do that why why do more when they can get more (laughs) yeah Uh, we might as well be on another planet to them like these 2755 men and women are so far removed from the rest of us that why would they care to do more honestly like uh, there are so few melinda gates's and whatever the hell jeff bezos's ex-wife's name is I don't remember, and that's you know what? That's honestly a point in her favor too. Yes. I don't know her name, exactly. But she's all, but and she makes a point of not going out of her way to make sure people know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, wanted to throw that curveball at you. So I had nothing to do with the cancellation of 
police officers? That would have been a good question. What, why we should respect Jim Gordon and stuff. But so I had nothing to do with that. I want to respect Jim Gordon. But it took him three <laughs> movies up to the very end to figure it out. Bruce oh. Wayne. <laughs> I, I remember leaning over to Dave and during that movie when he finally figures it out, and I said, "The last horse crosses the finish line." I know. Line. Bruce Poor Wayne? Jim. Poor Gordon. Jim Gordon. And yeah. he had like a super question mark at the end of it. Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne? <laughs> um, yeah, the last person. Like all the major villains in that movie knew who Batman was. Yeah. He knew. Uh, fucking John Blake, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's figured character, it figured it out on his own and has known. As a kid. He has known for the last eight years. So basically the entirety of his career. I'm sorry. So you you're you, you wanted this to be a discussion about uh, Gordon about our police corruption. Well, you brought up the whole controversy about the whole controversy about cancellation. Well, of- I brought that up because like uh, the the question of why is Batman still relevant when he's just another white or when he's just another rich white guy. You know, when the the question is. Uh, the the issue of Bruce being a rich white guy is a lot deeper than that. Like they make a joke about it frequently of Bruce's superpower is money. Well, it's also the multiple years of martial arts training and right. you know his detective skills and his. Uh, well, I mean, even Ben Affleck talks about it. You know, it's like my superpower is that I can afford to be to do what i do yeah. you know it's like that i that i can have these gadgets and that i can uh, have a have a whole uh, r&d division at my disposal to create a car to create a plane to create well, the, suits and the, you know it's like um the idea but but he also knows i also had the ability to go away and train and become totally not dependent on outside of myself i can i can trust myself and i know i can trust myself so me getting a team together is almost beyond me but the idea that um yeah like you said it's like he's trained himself into a state of more than just a guy yeah chris what were you gonna say the, i mean the joke is and even batman jokes about it himself time time is the money yes but really it is that his trauma has hurt him so much yes. That he has developed a superhuman focus. Yeah. That whatever he's applying himself to, he's going to make himself the best to further himself to to in order to wage his war on crime. Except when it comes to women. And the, but, yeah, or he's gonna <laughs> fall apart completely for eight years. years. Look. It was very hurting. I yes, it was. Very it was very hurtful for him to lose Rachel. I agree. Was it eight? Years? I mean, she done that got blown up. I mean. She done got blown up. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you mentioned yeah. like how many years he was Batman, but it was specifically in the Nolan verse. He was Batman for all of six months. And then he quit for eight years. And then he quit for eight years, came back for two nights, I think. <laughs> yeah. And then well, no, no, no. five was, was, months later, came back for one day. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it was, he, got, uh, he got... And see, that. if I had a problem with the movies, it would have been Dark Knight's weird sense of time. Yeah. Because it only took him, what, three and a half months to get his back? repaired and it only took that guy punching his throat. Oh, Dark Knight Rises? Yeah, Dark Knight yeah. Rises. Okay, the continuity of Dark Knight Rises drives me bonkers because one, okay, I get that we are dealing with some of the smartest characters in this universe, mm-hmm. with Lucius Fox, with Dr. Pavel, with even Bane and how smart yeah. he yeah. and, uh, spoiler alert, Talia are. The fact that they were able to pinpoint down to the second when a nuclear reactor was going to implode. Keep the keep the thing moving. Keep like tr- okay, I can I can see boiling that down to like this could be even the best scientist would have a a, 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 a re, maybe a really good estimate, but an estimate. Yeah, like a seventy two hour window. Yeah, not. The exact second. So there's that. We have 23 days. There's the fact that, yes, five months passed between Bane's takeover of the city and Bruce coming back finally as Batman and saving the day. We see very little of what happens during that five months. 
Um, there's also weird things like the lights are still on. I'm going to put that, put that out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, it's also really bothered me during the stock exchange scene that it is full ass the middle of the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Like it is broad daylight when that scene begins. Bain and co are inside the stock exchange for, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say a half hour. I would say half hour to an hour. Maybe an hour. Yeah. When they leave, it is still full ass daylight. When Batman arrives, it is dark. <laughs> that means the that sun went down so fast. That means that the, <laughs> the time of day would have to be in late fall since it's on the East Coast. Because Gotham's always been an East Coast city. It has to be late fall on the East Coast, like, uh, and in, and then it would have to be somewhere around five to six p.m. when that starts, for it to have to start in pretty much broad daylight and then just be dark by then. And then that that bomb, <laughs> it, why didn't it explode the five on um, one of the times it hit the ground or hit a building or something like that? But he was able to get it out over the ocean to blow yeah. it up. It, I mean, it, no, I'm sorry, you just gave me, you gave me the vision in my head of Batman flying it out to sea, but he just he keeps hitting buildings with it. That's bing, what he was bong, doing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Um, oops, 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 oops. Because, because JGL is like, it's happening, it's happening, pushes the kids, and but then he just... He just flies right over them. Oh. Yeah, I mean, he does kind of bonk the <laughs> nuclear reactor into when several... My bad. The first time he pulls it out of the <laughs> truck, it just a blamp. <laughs> what if that had been the end? Like, <laughs> I mean, everyone see, dies, but at least the bad guys lose. It rolls off the back of the truck, <laughs> smack dab. Bruce and Gordon and Selena look at it for a few seconds. Oops. Smoke starts coming out of the top. You, just, you hear the Batman voice, oops. <laughs> and then, like, from a distance, you just see a mushroom cloud of Gotham. And JGL's like, oh, it happened. And then it jump cuts to Christopher Nolan giving you the middle finger. <laughs> huh. <laughs> We that haven't we talked went, about Alfred though. We haven't talked about Michael Caine and Alfred in any way. So was like, I was sort of hoping that was your mystery question, but <laughs> mystery question: How great is Michael Caine? How great is Michael Caine throughout every every film? Okay, he's Bruce, so integral. This iteration of Bruce Wayne truly did not deserve Alfred. <laughs> I agree. Like the world does not deserve Michael Caine's Alfred. Um. Yeah, he's he's one of the best parts of every movie. From him casually hitting a League of Shadows member over the head with a golf club and saying, oh, I hope he's not a member of the fire brigade. <laughs> I, I think Alfred is probably the only person besides Bruce to successfully take down a League of Shadows yeah. member. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, yeah, I mean, he's brilliant. And, and uh, Morgan Freeman, too. Morgan Freeman's fantastic. Um, but there's a moment, there's this... Some, I, you know, I've been talking about the uh, Dark Knight and Batman Begins being my favorite of the three and Dark Knight having the best villain and stuff. But Dark Knight uh, Rises might have the best Alfred stuff in the sense. His, oh, yeah. His breakup, his breakup speech with Bruce at the first third of the movie. And then when he comes back for the funeral um, of Bruce and he just like just falls apart at the parent's grave, Mm -hmm. which is right next to Bruce's. And, and just like, I failed you just, just the, and he's, he's barely in rises, but the idea that his, his moments in rises are probably the most poignant of his appearances in the movies. But the first two it's, we were talking about quips earlier, Chris, you know, his quips in these movies are brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, his, his relationship and his, Relationship with uh, I don't know I don't know if it's something Bale and Kane developed together, but the Bruce and Alfred relationship is just amazing. Well, I mean, the, the relationship has always been portrayed in the comics. As, well, not always, but modern parlance, it's a surrogate father, surrogate son. Yes. Yeah. And Alfred is definitely there to put a lid on put a lid on it when Bruce gets go, starts going yes. too far. Exactly. Yeah. And, and when to, he gets the note, in. when he gets the note from Rachel, mm-hmm. not to give this to Bruce. 
When he decides that he's going to burn it instead of give it to him. Yeah. And then he has to tell him about it. Yeah. It's great stuff. I do want to point out, talking about Morgan Freeman again, he's got one of my favorite line deliveries uh, in the whole trilogy in Rises when um, Bruce goes to see him in his office and uh, Fox is like, you know, there was a time where you'd come in here and you'd ask me for something crazy and Bruce says, I'm retired. And there's a beat and then Lucius Fox goes, well, why don't I just show you anyway? <laughs> for old times. Sake. Yeah, for old times sake. I love that. I've always loved that line so much. He has that and then um the scene at the end of uh Dark Knight where he puts his name into the you know, to resign and yeah. he puts his name into the the all-seeing visual board and um he totally oh, he knew I was going to do this and yeah, and he doesn't say a word just this gets that Morgan Freeman mm-hmm. grin on his face and then just turns around and walks out, you know, knowing that, Oh, this was the plan. Yeah. And I don't uh, have to retire. I don't have to retire. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it the, the supporting, all the supporting cast. Um, and we didn't, we didn't talk about, uh, Aaron, um, uh, as two face, yeah, uh, Aaron Eckert, Aaron Eckert as two face. We didn't talk about, uh, even Katie Holmes as the rate. Uh, Who? Katie Holmes. Who? Katie Holmes Cruz. Oh, no. I think you mean Maggie Gyllenhaal. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Maggie. You're talking about the Rachel, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Maggie original. Gyllenhaal. The original Rachel. No, I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> wow. You didn't like Katie Holmes? <laughs> okay. Oh, she's fine. I guess. <laughs> but uh, um, I like they just do not acknowledge it whatsoever. Nope. That's my favorite part. <laughs> that, to the, to the sh- point where Bruce has a framed photo of Rachel in, in Rises and it's Maggie Gyllenhaal and not Katie Holmes. But the, and Maggie, Maggie Gyllenhaal is like two feet taller That's than weird, Katie right, Holmes. Too. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the supporting casts um, are just Killian brilliant. Murphy. Killian Murphy. Yeah. He and kills so, it. Somehow he, he appears in all three, doesn't he? Yeah, he's the only villain to appear in all three yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, brilliant. No, none of you took uh, took the time to appreciate my Killian Murphy kills I, a joke, and I'm really upset I, about it. I just it. let it sit as it Me was because it was so too good. Me too. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, so yeah, I, I, I keep going back to these literally are, are acting school films if you want if you want to know what it is i think there was a little bit of pieces yes in terms of casting i think there's a little bit of i've always wanted this actor uh in a movie of mine because he cast eric roberts in in batman begins as a a mobster and in uh the third one matthew modine is like is the police chief i think he is or He's high yeah, up, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The chief of police. Yeah, I was just I pulled I was, up the cast list, and because, I was like, I was just thinking about those earlier today. Is like, like those are like picks from like you know growing up in the '80s and being you know and being I a really moviegoer. Wish list. Items. Yeah, and I mean, the cast get progressively more impressive all the way up to rises. Yeah, which I I have pulled up here. Uh, of course, Christian Bale, Gary Oldman, Morgan Freeman, Michael we Caine. About Gary Oldman. Rises also has Tom Hardy, yep. Anne Hathaway, yep. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Marion Cotillard, Matthew Modine, Ben Mendelsohn, Byrne Gorman, Aidan Gillen, Nestor Carbonell returning again, yes, as the mayor. Brett Cullen, that's who I was trying to think of as uh, the congressman, mm-hmm. uh, who would later go on to play uh, Thomas Wayne in Joker, mm. the, uh, the Joaquin right. Phoenix Joker. That is right. Okay. Yeah. Now I know where uh, and because Katie and I love her so much in the show Ted Lasso, uh, Rises also has Juno Temple, who, who's just hilarious and lovely. Who who does she play in? Uh, she is Selena's friend. Friend, yeah. The the, the little, uh, yes, the little yes, blonde. Yes, I, and and I and I can't believe. Well, we haven't talked about Anne Hathaway, and um, if you've listened to this podcast before, you know I have my issues with Anne Hathaway. All because of and, one fucking well, all movie. because of one movie. And you and have sworn l- off everyone involved with the movie Rachel getting married. Anne Hathaway is brilliant as Selena Kyle slash Catwoman and and rises. And uh, she she's really great. Um, you're gonna let you're and, gonna let Michael Caine have a pass on Jaws four, where you're gonna keep holding holding Anne Hathaway's feet to the fire. For Rachel getting Rachel getting married forever, huh? Well, which this Michael Caine wasn't 
he wasn't all of Jaws 4. You know, he was the fun part of Jaws 4. Uh, Anne Hathaway was not fun in <laughs> Rachel's still, he'll still, His married. filmography may have uh, more stinkers than Anne's made movies. Yeah, I, I do have, I don't have a hate for Jonathan Demme. You know, I do hate him for making that movie. I don't have a hate for most of the rest of the cast of that movie. Uh, but, but I do have, you know, I, 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 I do not like Anne Hathaway in that movie. But All right, we're not talking about the but, Rachel getting married cinematic but universe. But Selena Kyle is great. Uh, Aaron Eckert is Two-Face. The RGMCU. Is, and we haven't talked about no. uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who... You don't have to. He does so good. Man. He's great. Uh, uh, he... There, there was talk at one point of doing a spinoff comic book following his tenure as Batman, which I was initially like all in, like, yeah, show me the furthering adventures of John Blake. And then I stopped and considered it. And John Blake is an orphan rookie police detective, recently divorced from his job as a police detective with zero martial arts training, no like combat training yeah. definitely not the league of shadows level training so he, he is 100 percent going to die his first time <laughs> out because he's not even nightwing right because that's no that's solely dick grayson is well, there have been a right? couple of nightwings uh, there, dick grayson least, was first uh and dick grayson was also uh a child gymnast circus yes. star yes. And, and all of these robins nightwings all of them throughout the years have been personally trained by, ben, by, by batman. batman uh poor john blake has none of that at his best but he's he got did, a, he did get the teaching of if you're going to work solo wear a mask Right, he got that, and he got clear the corners rookie. Clear the corners rookie. So, yeah, so he's, he's going to wear a mask, and he's going to look in every corner that he of every room that he a, goes he's in. He's a really good well, detective. He's a really that's great tend to fly police to corners, person, so. um, and he's and he's he's a pretty decent fighter. And he, remember, he grew up in the orphanage, so he was he was on the streets, and he, he he's probably had street level fighting before. So it's like he's probably beat up a, a few of his. All people. right, but League of Shadows so. Batman got wrecked by Bane. So <laughs> no, right? Yeah, and plus, like. Uh, all of those suits were tailored for Bruce, who was a very muscular man. JGL, not so much. I want to see him putting like a droopy bat suit on and standing there in just front of the mirror. It. But just I, have, up his arms. I have to admit that after I watched, because I watched the, the second half of Dark Knight Rises last night, and I went immediately after it finished, I went immediately to 500 Days of Summer. And Perfect, my, yes. My favorite all-time Joseph Gordon, love it performance and uh um but i was like how wonderful is he in in dark knight rise i think he's great um and li like you said the the guy who plays uh uh the congressman uh his stuff with anne hathaway is just really really fun uh, again another great action sequence that that scene in the bar when she brings brings him over you know and it's like and has to, and beats up all those guys man it's like great stuff i want to say real quick before we get into our last discussion topic um reading tv tropes for uh -huh. this uh for dark knight rises this morning um solved a uh nine-year-old mystery for me personally uh -huh. people people love trying to point out the uh plot holes in rises which okay there are there kind of are a few <laughs> plot holes in rises but Shut whatever up. mainly it's just time shift Time shift, yeah, but the big one has always been how the hell did Bruce... People always want to ask, how did Bruce get back to Gotham? Right. And the answer is always, he's Bruce fucking Wayne. He's Batman. <laughs> yeah. he, he was going to have probably filed away in a filing cabinet somewhere. He has a whole folder of, if I get stuck somewhere and have to get back to Gotham, how do I do it? Somebody on TV Tropes, however, pointed out what is probably the most likely answer. Um... Uh, because the, the big things are like, okay, he was overseas with no money. Um, he could not fly into Gotham because uh, the National Guard was watching the air. Uh, he couldn't drive there because the bridges were out. How did he get in? And I am mad at myself for never realizing he fucking walked in. He walked. The, uh, the river was frozen over. Right, yeah. And going all the way back to Batman Begins, Roz taught him to mind your surroundings and to walk and to know where to walk on ice. Yeah. All Bruce had to do was get to the river leading into Gotham 
and fucking walk there. Yeah. Because when they tried to send Gordon out on the ice and uh, Batman batarangs those guys, he just calmly and coolly walks out across the ice straight to them, almost as though he's done it before. I read that this morning and I was like, fuck me, that's brilliant. <laughs> I can't believe in nine years I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> anyway. No one rewards you for paying attention. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, I, I, um, and this is one of the reasons why I brought up the whole, um, because uh, I was concerned that you might, Chris, might have issues with, oh shit, I talked to you about this earlier, David, um, uh, about, about. This is great podcast. <laughs> I know about um, his, uh, Nolan, issues with Nolan's right foreshadowing of stuff. Oh, it is very on the nose sometimes. We were specifically talking about that moment at the end of Rises. M- Matthew where, Modine. Uh, yeah, where Gordon is talking to Foley and he's going, come on, I'm not asking you to walk down Main Street in your dress blues. Five minutes later, <laughs> yep. Foley is walking down Main Street in his dress it's, blues. It's it's, a, it's a little on the nose sometimes. It is, but I feel like it's less egregious with comic books because it's much early. like much like pro wrestling, comic books you got to play you, you play big and loud with moments and you set up your own spots. Of course, and you set up your own gift. I think Rise has also uh, gave us gave the world the wonderful gift that was the most easily imitatable villain voice of all time, which was Bane. <laughs> it's true. It definitely did. People have not stopped doing the fucking Bane voice for nine years. It's as simple as covering your mouth and giving Pitching, a weird yeah. yeah, giving yourself a weird pitch to your voice, and you basically and you can breathing. get it within a minute. Somebody uh, on TV tropes. You are. The, you are just kind of hard. You are kind of breathing out this at the same time as you're talking too. Bruce. Uh, somebody on TV tropes pointed out that uh, they said the the scene of him fighting Bruce uh, the first time. It's like him. It's like Tom Hardy taking you on a tour of Europe. <laughs> his accent or his dialect is so all over the place. So our final discussion. Now we're going to take it back to uh, an easy answer here. Um, Ranking the Batman actors, I made a list of all the mainstream ones over the last, uh, I'll say, 30, 40 years. A little bit longer than that. Uh, Starting with Adam West, then Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Kevin Conroy, Christian Bale, and Ben Affleck. Stan, what is your uh, ranking of the Batman actors? Um... Just because I think he redefined it and then defined it, uh, I'm going to put Christian Bale number one. I'm going to put, um, and I've talked about this before, how much I love Ben Affleck as the new Batman. Um, I, I'll put him second. Um, and then we're going to have to go, I, I guess I'm going to have to, and I haven't even seen that much of the animated Batmans, but Kevin Conroy. Um and and it's weird because this is this is what's bad for me. And why, have you played Arkham? Have you played the Arkham games? I have played some of the Arkham games. Conroy voices Batman. Is he those is two. he yep. the okay? Con- then yep. yeah, then yeah, he's really great. And uh, in that sense, um, uh, but what Nolan's Batman did for me is it, kind of destroy the earlier stuff, the Burtons and the TV versions. It kind of it kind of put me back into what I was reading back in the day with world's finest and stuff like that. And the Batman Superman team ups and the justice league team ups and stuff like that. So, um, so that, uh, so Batman was redefined for me by Nolan. So it's like, uh, it's going to put the, I I can't even put the Clooney Val Kilmer into an order, but I'm going to say, uh, um, uh, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, and, uh, uh, just because I, I, I'm not sure if I include Adam West in that grouping because of the of the genre genre style they took mm-hmm. for it, um, but Adam West is is always going to be Adam West. Adam West. So yeah. yeah, let's let's him let's give him a category of his own. He's Adam West, like William Shatner is 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 Kirk, even though he might not be ranked as the best Kirk in a series of Kirks, but it's William Shatner. Yeah. And and he was there first, you know, so it's like, in that sense. So it's going to be Bale and Affleck for me at the top. 
Chris, what do you think? Can I defer to you for a minute? I feel like my ranking is going to be wildly different from all of yours. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, mine is pretty similar to Stan's. Big surprise. Uh, number one, Christian Bale. Then Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, Kevin Conroy, Val Kilmer, Adam West, George Clooney. And I don't feel bad about that because George Clooney would have put himself at the bottom of oh, this yeah. list. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, so you're wildly different list. Yes. Go for well, it. one, I can't rank Affleck because I have not seen any of his performances. Oh, before. okay. Uh, two, I would, yeah, I would, uh, I, 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 I hate to say bottom, but yeah, I think Clooney and Kilmer, they kind of like came in, they did fine. They did, I mean, it's like, with what they were given, with what they were given, they did fine. They played to the parts that as they were written, no problem there. Um, um, I would, what are the, what are the rest of them again? Uh, Adam West, Michael Keaton, uh, Christian Bale. Right. I would put Bale next, and then above that, I would tie Keaton and uh, Adam West oh, because and- they both, I think they both hit the right. They struck both struck the right chord for Batman with what they were doing, mm-hmm. B- with the darker sense of of what uh, the eighty nine one was and the the wild camp of the sixties, which wasn't. Which wasn't West's fault because that had everything to do with how they had cracked down and the, you know, they were in the midst of the Silver Age in terms of Batman yeah. stories. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then did I miss anybody? Conroy. Conroy's number one I of that list. But I am going to throw out another voice actor that you uh, you wouldn't be familiar with. And Stan, you would like this show too, talking about world's finest and everything else. The show Cartoon Network did a few years ago, uh, Batman: The Brave and the Bold which is entirely the Silver Age Batman yes. stuff. And Batman is voiced by Diedrich Bader, who really? most people would remember as uh, the neighbor from Office Space or uh, one of Drew Carey's friends on the Drew Carey yes. show. But he has done a prolific amount of voice work over the past couple of decades, and he voiced Batman on that show. He's got an amazing, rich, deep voice, gruff that he used on that show, and it was key to making that show as good as it was because not only was the writing good, with him playing stoic, gruff Batman as straight as possible, going through all these insane adventures, really helped make the show as good as it was. And that kind of that kind of goes full circle with with Patton Oswalt's Mordok, Modok <laughs> for me. Um, I almost uh, just went like a more complete list. I was going to include David Mazuz from Gotham. Right. I have no idea if I said that right. Ian Glenn from Titans. Well, see, I, and see, I, I know why Diedrich Bader wouldn't have been on that list again because it's yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like these are these are less mainstream things. They were pretty popular at the time, but not, they wouldn't have come through. And uh, you've seen the Titans? Ver- no, yeah. I haven't. Uh, I've only seen screenshots of Ian Glenn as, and I don't even know if I'm saying Ian correctly for his, uh, for the pronunciation of his name. Because I, I didn't know they did the Batman in that. To be yeah. a completionist, you could also start throwing out the other voices that they've done for the animated movies. Too. Well, I was going to say Peter Weller. Yes, as older Batman in uh, Dark Knight Returns, and. Will Arnett, right? Is it Will Arnett? Will as... Arnett did the Lego Batman. That's yeah, right. Lego. Yeah. And it's it's fun. It, again, it fits exa- I would... exactly. It fits exactly for that movie. He's my favorite because it, it's it's he, he's more of a blowhard in that movie. He's yeah. more bravado than anything else. Yes. All right, and finally, um, we've got the Batman coming out next year. Mm-hmm. A movie that I could not possibly be more excited about. I think I have watched the trailer for the Batman more times than any other trailer in movie history. Um, Robert Pattinson joins the long line of people who looked at the casting and went, what the fuck is that? Which they did with Michael Keaton yep. in the eighties. They were like, why is Mr. Mom being Batman? Yeah. They did it with Bale. They yeah. really did it with Affleck. Mm hmm. Um, and now it's like that kid from Twilight is Bruce Wayne. What the it's, fuck? It, and it's even true in MCU. Every time they've come out with, here's who's going to be, you know, one of our flagship characters. Like, why them? Right. Uh, so finally, the very last question is uh, just a prediction. Once the Batman comes out, uh, where do you think Rob Pattinson is going to fall in the list of rankings that you just made? Stan, what do you think? I'm really hoping that this is a this is a new powerful version of the Batman and that, uh, he can, he has the potential of either being in between, uh, Affleck and, uh, Bale for me. So either second or second. So, um, uh, and, but he also has a potential 
if it's not that great of a film that it be, it, it would be because of him you know or that well yeah be, that's a lot to carry on your shoulders yes and uh uh, which would drop him, but but I think from what I've seen, and it was it was like it's like what happened with Ben Affleck. It's like I wasn't sure about Ben Affleck as Batman, but then I'm like, well, he's 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 aged into that gruff yeah. exterior of the older Batman, the guy who's been around for a while. Um, so and then then we see the fight scenes from the. Uh, uh, Batman Snyder, versus Superman. Uh, yes, the Batman versus Superman, and uh, and then what he does in the in Justice League, in Justice League, the Snyder Cut. Um, I should he, just be here to fill in sentences he, for he, you constantly. He became he became very 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 much the Batman. So it's like I think Pattinson has the same kind of potential as that. So. I'm going to write down my hourly rate to be your translator. I'm just going to slide this across the table. You tell me if you accept. No, I, Chris, have that, uh, I have that affliction. Oh, hold on. He's not done, Dave. <laughs> Where do you think Rob Pattinson is going to fall on your list? Um, If I predict it right, uh, I, and I hope he does well, um, I would say he'd probably tie with either Bale or on my list or tie with uh, Keaton and West. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat as Stan here. I think um, he's probably going to end up being between Bale and Affleck. Um, I mean, even if he falls short and he comes in, you know, between Affleck and Keaton, that's still pretty high. That's pretty high. Here's yeah. the thing. It won't be from lack of effort because we've seen how much how, how hard he goes and stuff that's not Twilight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stan and I were talking about this uh, Man, he yesterday. Was, that was the most paycheck dead inside I've ever seen an actor. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he has talked about how much he hated that he experience. He said so on the commentaries. <laughs> uh, anybody who didn't, you know, who doesn't think Pattinson can handle, handle the role, I say, uh, go and watch Cosmopolis. Cosmopolis. Go and watch Tenet. Rob Pattinson Tenet, yes. is a great fucking actor. He's just like Kristen Stewart. Everyone was like, oh, that girl from Twilight. Kristen Stewart's a great fucking actress when she's allowed to work in something yeah. that's not Twilight. But anyway, that is our discussion of the Dark Knight trilogy. So uh, next month, we are going to continue our Nolan discussion by talking about the film Inception. Inception is next. Um, so again, we're kind of, I might just keep talking about the dark Knight. All right. <laughs> again, we're kind of jumping around the timeline here, uh, of cro- uh, chronology because rises came out in 12. Yeah. I'm just going to abbreviate everything I say now. Dark Knight Rises came out in 2012. Uh, Inception came out in 2010. So we're going back a little bit. That's something I, I forgot to mention that, I mean, that came out same year as Avengers. Yeah. Like it, it hit in May. That was another big fucking summer. Yeah, I remember saying to Dave, and I was absolutely right. I was like, I'm going to love both of those movies for different reasons, mm-hmm. and I did. Yeah. Man, thinking about it, Nolan, I, I'm sure he wouldn't have wanted to take it on and keep doing it. Man, Nolan should have handled DC. Right, instead of just being the executive producer. He, because he really knows how to. Str- and I know Snyder's redeemed himself in a lot of people's eyes and really hide it out of the park with Justice League, but. Man, the tone that Snyder seems to go for a lot of time is what Nolan just already does. Mm-hmm. He because he 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 hits that that sincerity and severity, and then there's always that little bit of light too. Yeah, and if we're not going to go in that direction, then after uh, seeing the Suicide Squad, I say just put it in James Gunn's hands. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's going to wrap us up. Coming up. Uh, Thursday night, and so probably coming out on Friday, we're doing a very special episode of This is a Takeover oh, with be, Shelby Ray Patterson. This is going to be interesting to hear. <clears throat> yep, with Shelby Ray Patterson and Gina Belmont, where they discuss the future of NXT and all the various changes that have been made over it's the last couple rebooted, of weeks. And if they officially called it NXT 2.0. Oh, boy. Um, so, Stan, if people want to reach out to you online, where can they find you at? I started an Instagram Okay, account. thank you, Stan. Oh, wait, you actually started saying yeah. something this time. I'm I, so sorry. I, I have an Instagram account. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. What's your Insta handle, Stan? Insta Stan. It should have been. I bet it's not, though. It should have been. I'm going to search. I want I want our listeners to search for that later. And if it's not you, 
we I, I want you to send him hate mail <laughs> i will i will personally if you if you tell me it's not true i will personally next podcast just start by calling him a fucking liar <laughs> um i'm you know what fuck it i'm gonna i'm gonna look where, chris where can people find you online at well oh, i'm on twitter at chris the okay if you want to uh, come and you know argue with me and it's okay okay a y just in case that was keeping you from reaching out to me but it's not all right so there is an insta stan it's stan watuski <laughs> there's insta stanless they're just stanless insta stan 666 that appears to be a woman uh there's insta insta jesus god insta stangram a man named stanley stewart uh insta underscore stan ironically with a picture of batman as his picture that's someone taking instagram uh there's another uh name insta stan steven looker insta stan x insta stan dot kz there are so many of these on here. You really pick, should have picked a better one before you, you decided fucking to liar. lie to us, you fucking liar. Anyway, if you want to reach out to me online, you can do so on Instagram, <laughs> at D.B. Hensley. That took an extra, like, five minutes. It did, you <laughs> lying liar. If you want to keep up with Long Walk Productions, I'm you can visit us news. online at longwalk.us, or you can search for Long Walk Productions and Long Walk Podcasts on Facebook. To see more of our original work or hear past episodes, of any of our podcasts that are no longer streaming you can follow the youtube links in the show notes thank you very much for listening and as always if you enjoy the show or any of the shows on the long walk podcast network please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on if you'll excuse me i need to set stan's pants on fire <laughs>